<clears throat> All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Still not feeling like 100% right now, but I really, really wanted to talk about the Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller. Before I start talking about Tom Miller, I want everyone to follow the link in the description to VaporsDoVote.com. All one word, VaporsDoVote.com. Just do the call to action. Pause the video. Pause the video. Go do the call to action. Come back. I'll wait. Did everybody do it? I'll still wait. All right. Well, as we are all really well aware, vaping seems to be just the biggest topic in the nation right now. And if President Trump can manage to slime his way past all of the multiple calls for impeachment, well, then he's gonna have a few million pissed off ex-smokers to deal with. Currently, many of the tobacco tax driven states, places like Michigan and New York and California, they're all kind of laser focused on banning flavored nicotine products, despite the fact that both the FDA and the CDC have reported that this recent wave of lung illnesses and injuries and even deaths are directly related to black market THC cannabis products, stating THC is present in most of the samples tested by FDA to date, and most patients report a history of using THC containing products. The latest national and state findings suggest products containing THC, particularly those obtained off the street or from other informal sources, example, friends, family members, illicit dealers, are linked to most of the cases and play a major role in the outbreak. In fact, not once on the CDC or FDA website does it even mention flavored nicotine products causing anybody to go to the hospital with lung respiratory issues. Which honestly isn't super surprising considering there are millions and millions and millions of people worldwide that have been using flavored nicotine products for the better part of a decade safely and without issue. And in addition to these blue governors using using powers that they don't have to ban the wrong product, our own federal government is planning on making an announcement in the coming days to quote unquote, clear the market of flavored nicotine products, leaving some 10 to 12 million vapors nationwide without a less harmful alternative to deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes, which, hey, let me check. Yep, cigarettes still kill roughly 1,300 people every single day. Well, thankfully, Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller kind of sees the insanity of what's going on, and he is not happy about it at all. You see, Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller has been battling with big tobacco for most of his career and most recently became a very vocal advocate of harm reduction and utilizing these flavored vapor products to get smokers to move away from deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. Most recently, Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller penned a letter to federal officials warning the White House of potential adverse and unintended consequences of a nationwide flavor ban. Those likely adverse and unintended consequences include things like the closure of thousands thousands of small to medium sized businesses, vape stores and manufacturers as the products they make and sell are predominantly flavored. Many of these also provide market based supportive services to smokers wishing to take up vaping as an alternative to smoking. A transfer of the supply of flavored products from legitimate American businesses to highly professional consumer facing Chinese internet based suppliers. See fast tech, for example, the development of a new and flourishing black market in flavored nicotine e-liquids manufactured by amateurs, opportunists, and criminal enterprise. Migration of users to the existing unregulated subculture of DIY mixing of nicotine and food flavors. Vapors or dual users may revert to smoking or the use of other tobacco products and current smokers who would have otherwise switched to vaping in the future may remain as smokers. Some switch to tobacco flavored e-liquids. As we discussed, this experience is nothing like smoking. Smoking. Some may quit vaping and smoking altogether, though may increase other risky behaviors. Unintended consequences like these are what we, the consumers of flavored nicotine products, have been trying to tell our politicians and elected officials about for months now, which unfortunately, it just seems to fall on deaf ears. Through my conversations with politicians and public health committee members, it seems they are very ignorant to what vaping is and are more or less unwilling to even learn about the products that they're trying to ban. I've said this before and I will probably say it again. This is a complicated issue that requires a complicated answer and a de facto ban is an unacceptable solution to the literal millions of ex-smokers that utilize these flavored nicotine products to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes, which 
Yep, just double checked. Still cause roughly 1,300 deaths every single day. In his letter to federal officials, Attorney General Tom Miller points out the FDA's inability to even regulate the products that are on the market right now, calling the FDA approval process enormously burdensome, opaque, and unpredictable. Not to mention costly, as submitting a PMTA for just five flavored e-liquid products would run between 2.5 million and 3.5 million dollars. These FDA regulations clearly play right into the hands of big tobacco. And in this letter, he also goes on to discuss the nuances of the youth vaping, uh, hang on, heavy air quotes here, epidemic, starting off by saying, we do not wish to downplay these numbers and recognize that any rapid rise in a youth risk behavior is troubling. He has a chart and breaks down the data from the 2018 National Youth Tobacco Survey, the same data that our own former head of the FDA, Scott Gottlieb, originally used to proclaim the epidemic in the first place. It is evident from the table that one, most vaping is infrequent and therefore does not suggest serious addiction or public health concerns, and two, among frequent adolescent vapors, there is a strong association with prior tobacco use and therefore at least a potential benefit from vaping. Only 0.6% of high school age vapors are both frequent users and have no prior history of tobacco use. Now compare that 0.6% as Attorney General Tom Miller points out to other youth use risky behavior, things like youth alcohol use, 29.8%, youth binge drinking, 13.5%, youth cannabis use, 19.8%, youths carrying a weapon, 15.7%, youths texting or emailing while driving, 24.6%. More Young people have tried heroin, meth, hallucinogens, and prescription painkillers without a prescription than non-smoking youths who have picked up vaping. And Attorney General Tom Miller goes into more recommendations for the FDA regarding youth use, flavors, and not just protecting adult access to less harmful vapor products, but essentially protecting an entire industry from government overreach. And obviously I can't go over everything that he has said in this letter, but if you wanna read this letter in its entirety, it will be linked down below in the description. Attorney General Tom Miller ends the letter by saying, in conclusion, we hope the observations above are of interest. We believe the United States is headed for a crisis in this field in 2020 with potentially millions of Americans facing life-threatening regulation imposed by the federal government. Our recommendations propose that White House staff on behalf of the president should enter this period well acquainted with the potential adverse consequences. And that's kind of where this story ends. At the time of this video, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds says she has no plan to ban flavored vapor products, but also hasn't ruled it out completely. And hopefully moving forward, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds will utilize her Attorney General, Tom Miller, to come up with a better solution than just ban it because we don't understand it. Anyway, that's kind of all I got for today, everybody. Before we wrap this up, I want to remind you one more time, head over there to vaporsdovote.com take the little call to action. Also check out vape.vote as well. And of course, I have to mention kasa.org. Go sign up. It's free and easy. You'll get calls to actions. You can be part of the bigger fight. And just remember, no matter what any crooked politician tells you, that's right, you keep on vaping.